Second issue is max value, and that's addressed by this slide here. The game is to say when you receive a packet uh, on the wireless network or on the wire network and you have to translate this packet between the controller and the access point and back, what value are going to tag this packet with depending on what value you receive from the client. First of all, when you design your SSID, you know that you're associating an SSID with a QoS value. So if I take this SSID here and I go to the um, QoS tab, you see that I'm mapping this um, SSID to certain QoS level, which is the max QoS level expected on this SSID. So if I choose silver and if I go to uh, QoS profiles for silver, I'm going to see that silver is QoS value of 3, right here. And if you look at my table just before, uh, you see that 3 is actually translated into uh, 1p0. Um, that is to say, basically, untagged. OK, but let's suppose that your mapping is 3 for the state of the exercise. So you have a SSID that says that your mapping is going to be 3 max. Now, if you receive a packet from the cable with a QoS value of, say, 5 instead of 3, and you need to translate this packet and send it over to the wireless network, the question is, are you going to keep this tag of 5, or are you somewhere going to max cap this value to 3, which is the maximum value allowed to your SSID? Well, the rule of thumb is that you're going to cap this value to 3. So you receive a packet on the controller. Um, it has an 8.1p and DSCP equivalent of a 5, for example. And you're going to look at your SSID and say, oh, I'm sorry, but this value is supposed to be capped to 3. So what's going to happen is that here, let me go there, here, when you translate this one P value into the external, as you say, the encapsulated outer value, you're going to translate this value with a cap value. So if you receive 5 here, you're going to look at your cap, say my cap is 3, and you're going to put 3 here. What is a bit tricky is that if you have an equivalent here uh, in DSCP, let's say EF, which is equivalent of 5, uh, you're not going to cap this one. So here you're going to see 5, or that is to say EF. And inside, of course, you keep the value as it was before, that is to say EF. So you have a 1P value, which is 3, which is the cap of your uh, SSID, and the DSCP value, which is 5. All right? You send this packet over from the controller towards the access point. One key element is that your controller is probably going to be on the trunk. So because it's on the trunk, you have both the 1P and the DSCP. So here the switch will be able to read this packet and see that the max value should be 3. And of course, as you translate this packet to um, an access port to the uh, access point, the 1P tag will disappear because the 1P tag is only uh, available or visible on trunks. So the only value that you have left is a DSCP, which is again EF, it's 5, it's not 3. So that's why we say here on the switch you probably want to have a map, a mechanism that translates DSCP into 1P so that you retag this DSCP to 3 max if you want to do so. That's probably a good idea. Anyway, when you get to the access point, the access point is going to look at the LWAP information to look at what clients this uh, packet is going to be for. It's going to read the SSID max value for that client, and it's going actually to itself translate the DSCP value here into the cap value. So even though you have EF here, um, the access point is going to say, oh, my max for the SSID is 3, I'm going to translate this DSCP into the 802.11e value 3, you know, whatever the, the value is, back, uh, silver, or, um, and translate it to, to the client without um, keeping 5. So DSCP here between uh, the access point and the client is still 5. But although you had 5 here, the access point itself uh, is going to cap itself. So you're going to translate this 5 value into um, 11EQ3, which is the max of your SSID. So basically, this DSCP is going to be a problem on the access port between the switch and the access points, or anywhere where you're going to read the DSCP value instead of the 1P value, especially if you're routing between your controller and the access point. So that's why you need that map somewhere here. The same logic applies on the other side. When you send a packet from the wireless world to the access point, uh, suppose this client for some reason is sending 5 and the SSID max is 3, the access point is going to apply the same logic. It's going to keep the DSCP value internally, 
that the client asks for, that is to say 5 EF in, uh, in other words, um, it's going to translate the 11E into the external DSCP value but with a cap logic. If the max value is 3 on the SSID it's going to translate this into 3 uh, this would say AA for CS3, regardless of what the client originally asked. So if the client asks 5, you're going to get 3 only. And again here, you don't have 1P because the access point is probably on an access port, so there is no 1P on that section. And when it will get to the switch somewhere, uh, the switch may be able to add uh, the layer 2 tag if it's getting on the trunk. It will translate this value into 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 it to the 1P and this 3 here is going to be appearing as the 1P3 here and you're going to go to the controller where the controller is going to remove the outer header read the original DSCP and it's going to apply the same logic out it's going to say first of all I'm going to keep the DSCP value that the client asks for so here in this section in my example you have EF that is to say 5 equivalent of 5 um, but because your SSID cap is 3 the controller is going to again on the 1p value put the max value decided for the SSID that is to say 3. So you have this packet leaving the controller with the 1p value set of 3 and the uh, DSCP value set to EF that is to say 5. And this is why again on the Ethernet switch here you probably want to have a map a policy somehow that relabels the DSCP uh, into the max of 3 or something like that. So something that you would be um, uh, agreeing on. If you trust your clients, you may decide to keep this DSCP value as the right value and retag the 1P into 5. But most likely, that's the other way around. You want to do, that is to say, cap the DSCP to whatever you allow, that is to say 3. This is also why when you uh, configure the ports to the access points and the controller, you say MLS QoS trust. And on the controller, you're going to say trust cos cost being the layer 2, the 1p value, because that's the value you capped on, so you know that's the value you control, that's the, uh, the value you decided of. And for the same reason, when you get to the access point, you're going to say MLS QoS trust, trust DSCP, because your access point is going to cap this DSCP value, and by the way, that's the only value you can trust, because there is no 1p value on the access port to the, to the access point. Last little bit, if there is no tag, um, Cisco documentation is a bit different from what you would see in if you sniff packets. Cisco documentation says that you're going to tag the packet automatically to whatever value you see on the SSID. In other words, if you see no tag, you're going to put whatever value you have for the SSID here. That is to say 3 in my example. Actually, if you sniff the packet, that may be true, might have been true um, generations ago, you know, in code 3 or something, but in code 4.2 and later, what you see is that there is no tag. So if your packet is received untagged, there is no tag on the packet between the controller and the access point, so it's basically based effort. And when you get to the access point, the packet is put in the DCF uh, queue and is sent in the DCF logic. Okay, that's it. So in summary, two things you want to remember. First, this mapping 6 is default for voice in the IEEE uh, logic for the 1P and 811E protocols. This translates automatically to 5 on Cisco controllers, between Cisco controllers and access points. It does not translate automatically on the autonomous access point, so you want to do this translation manually. On the controller, even though you see 6 for the 1P mapping, you are actually going to get 5, so you don't need to do anything. Second thing, you're in control, so whenever you decide of an SSID max uh, QoS value, this max value is going to be applied between the access points and the controller. The controller is going to tag the 1P value and keep the DSCP uh, between the controller and the access point, and the access point is going to tag the DSCP value on the other way back, and this is going to be uh, capped again to whatever uh, value you decided for the SSID. For that reason, you're going to trust cos to do 1P on the controller port and for the same reason you're going to trust DSCP uh, on the access point port. In the next video we're going to look at how you configure uh, the Ethernet switch for this QoS, how you do this mapping and how you prioritize voice uh, when you want to send those packets between uh, access points and controllers on the switch and on the routers. I hope this was useful for you, I would like to thank you for watching.